All right, so we're going to go through the uh, first paper in this A2 series, um, Periodic Table Elements and Physical Chemistry. So we kick off with the multiple choice, um, and it asks which atom is not an isotope of iodine. Well, if you check your periodic table, uh, which is obviously on your data sheet, you'll see that the atomic number of iodine is 53. Um, and you can work out, uh, your mass number you know is the number of neutrons plus the number of protons. They've told you the number of neutrons, so mass number minus number of neutrons equals number of protons, which is there. And if you do that calculation quickly, you'll see A, B and C all have 53 protons, which means it's iodine, but D has 52, which means it's not iodine. Uh, so what is the type of bonding between ligands and metal ion? Well, um, hopefully you know that is dative covalent bonding, which is D. OK, what's the oxidation number of Mn in K2MnO4? Well, you'll know that potassium, when it's bonded, is always plus 1. So plus 1 times 2 is plus 2. Oxygen is always minus 2, um, apart from when it's uh, bonded with uh, fluorine or peroxides. Um, you've got four of them there. So that comes to minus 8. So to get the whole compound to add up to 0, Mn must be plus 6. So the answer is C. Uh, right, so this one you may think needs a lot of calculation. It doesn't really. Um, as long as you get the formula right, uh, which I've written down um, beside each of the compounds, hopefully you can see that uh, you're basically looking at the mass of the um, anion here. And hopefully you can see the uh, hydroxide, which is an oxygen and a hydrogen, adds up to 17. Uh, you've got two of them, so 2 times 17 is going to be uh, 34. Um, the rest of them are going to be, got to be more than that, because they've got, uh, carbonate's got three oxygens, nitrate's got three oxygens, and sulfur has got, uh, sulfate's got four oxygens, so it's got to be C. Uh, so, uh, for question five, you've got to get the, um, obviously, the equation right, which I've written um, below. Um, and then you know, obviously, the, the, the volume in centimetres cubed that you require is the number of moles divided by the concentration. Well, um, if you have a look at the equation, for every one calcium oxide, you need two HCLs. So, if you work out the number of moles of uh, calcium oxide, Oh, they've told you the number of moles of calcium oxide. So you need to double that to find the number of moles of HCl, which is 0.04. The concentration they've told you is 2. You times that by 1,000 and you will end up with the answer being 20 centimetres cubed. All right, so um, how many electrons are removed from uh, that massive uh, neon gaseous atoms to form Na and E plus ions. Well, you first of all need to find the number of moles of uh, neon, which is going to be the mass divided by the relative atomic mass of neon. Um, and then you times that by Avogadro's constant, which is obviously in your data sheet, which will convert moles into the number of atoms or number of particles, in this case electrons. Um, and you'll find the answer is going to be C. OK, moving on to question 7 then. Uh, you've got 8.5 grams of silicon tetrachloride reacting with excess zinc and you've got a percentage yield of 90%. How much silicon do you make? Well, obviously, first of all, you find your number of moles of silicon tetrachloride, which is here. That gives you 0.05 moles. Um, you only get 90% yield, so times that by 0.9 and then finally times it by the relative top mass of silicon there and you'll find the answer to be a 1.26 grams. Uh, four pairs of solutions can mix, which forms a white precipitate. Uh, okay, if you whiz around, uh, hopefully you remember from your testing of ions that uh, barium sulfate, uh, this is a test for uh, the sulfate ion, that will form a white precipitate. So it is D. Right, so we're looking at bond enthalpies now. Uh, they've told us uh, delta H for this reaction and they want us to find the enthalpy of the HI bond. Uh, so you'll hopefully remember that um, the the bonds uh, broken minus the bond made equals delta H for the reaction. So um, if you add these two numbers up, uh, it's one bond from each, you get 587 uh, kilojoules per mole. That's going to be minus two 
hydrogen iodide bonds give you minus 9 kilojoules. Rearrange that and you get HI to be 298, uh, the answer is C. Um, for something like this, just watch out. Bond enthalpies are always positive, so it's got to be either C or D. So if your answer comes out uh, being minus 298, it could be that you just uh, haven't put the equation quite right, so just make sure you, you would have put C in that case. Uh, reaction is zero with respect to A. What is the correct concentration time graph? It's going to be A for that one. So a nice bit of transition metal chemistry now. Um, reacting aqueous uh, chromium 3 plus ions with excess hydroxide. Uh, because it's excess, you're going to form um, complex A. HA and HB are two strong monobasic acids. Uh, what's the concentration of H plus once you've mixed those two together? Okay, so the first thing you find the moles of HA, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.15 rather. Um, uh, and then you find the number of moles of HB, um, which is going to be 0 0.135. Add them together to give you 0 0.285. And then you uh, realize, hopefully realise that if you add that and that together, your total volume is now 70 centimetres cubed. So moles divided by volume times 1,000 gives you your concentration and your answer will be C. Okay, mixture of N2 and O2 has a total pressure of 1.42 atmospheres. Uh, mole fraction is 0.7 of nitrogen. What is the partial pressure of oxygen? Well, um, obviously mole fractions, they all have to add up to 1. So if your mole fraction of N2 is 0.7, then the mole fraction of O2 must be 0.3. Um, then the partial pressure of O2 is going to be your mole fraction times your total pressure, and you will find that to be B. Okay, question 14 then. Uh, we've got uh, some electrochemistry here, uh, and we have to find out which statements are correct. So first of all, the cell potential is 1.14 volts. That's not the case, because the cell potential will be the difference between these two figures here, which is 0 0.46 volts. The reaction at the copper electrode is uh, going that way. Uh, that is correct, because uh, the silver is more positive, so it will go that way, so the copper will go that way, as they've described. And as you can see, um, because this one's going that way, the silver will increase in mass. I will deposit silver. So the answer is 2 and 3, which is C. And finally, which electron configuration is correct? Remember, chromium and copper are slightly odd. Um, the atom, the Fe2 plus is incorrect, that must be incorrect, because the 4s electrons are always lost first. So the answer's B. So, um, lithium aluminium hydride, I want us to do the dot and cross diagram of the AlH4 ion. Um, so this is going to be like sulfate carbonate, you're going to have covalent bonding within the iron. So aluminium, as you know, has got three electrons. So let's put those in like so. Hydrogen is going to have one. So that goes like so. And you notice he's got a minus charge, so the minus charge will go in there. And let's just complete that by putting a minus charge there. Uh, right, predicting some shapes now. NH4+, plus, that's going to be like uh, methane. It's going to be tetrahedral in shape. Uh, and you're going to have a bond angle of 109.5. NH2 minus, that's going to be like water, uh, so it's going to be non-linear. Whoops. Uh, can't spell linear. And therefore your bond angle is going to be 104.5. Right, so moving on, uh, we've got some boiling points now. Uh, so explain why the boiling point of pH3 is lower than NH3. Well, I hope you remember um, for hydrogen bonding, um, if you've got a molecule of an NH, an OH or an FH bond, you will have hydrogen bonding between the molecules. Um, therefore, um, ammonia will have hydrogen bonding, uh, and hydrogen bonding is stronger than permanent dipole-dipole, which you will find in phosphine. So explain why the boiling point of phosphine is lower than um, ASH3. Um, okay, so uh, AH, 
ASH3, it, uh, arsenic is obviously lower down in the group, so it's got more electrons and therefore will have stronger London forces than PH3. Right, so moving on to question 17 about group 2 and group uh, 17. Barium chloride, we're preparing from barium hydroxide um, uh, in the neutralization reaction, right in the equation. Well, if you want barium chloride, you're going to have to neutralize barium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid, and I've put the equation there. Reactivity down group 2 increases. Why is that? Well, this is a nice put of AS chemistry. Um, obviously, as you go down the group, the uh, atoms get bigger. So the atomic radius increases. There's more shielding of those outer electrons as well. So the nuclear attraction to the outer electrons will decrease and therefore the ionization energy decreases. Remember to put all those points down. Um, always talk about nuclear attraction and ionization energy. Uh, right, so we've got an example of disproportionation now. What is meant by disproportionation is when the same element is oxidized and reduced. And uh, let's have a look at this one. Well, um, as you'll know, potassium is plus one and oxygen is minus two, and I've got three of them to give you minus six. So in order for that to balance, chlorine has got to be plus five here. Uh, chloride here is going to be minus one, and here potassium is plus one. You're going to have oxygen as being minus two, so that gives you minus eight, and therefore to get that to balance, chlorine must be plus seven. Um, and therefore, just make sure that you make it really clear that chlorine is oxidized from plus 5 to plus 7 and reduced from plus 5 to minus 1. Systematic name, well, uh, ClO4 is uh, chlorate, but don't forget you need to put the oxidation number of chlorine in there. Um, and as we've just said, it is a 7. So potassium chlorate 7. Right, so we're now going on to entropy. Uh, so, first of all, write an equation and then explain how entropy changes. So, barium nitrate with sodium sulfate, hopefully you'll realise you will make barium sulfate, which is a solid, and also sodium nitrate, which is aqueous. So, the main thing is that the entropy will decrease because you are making a solid from aqueous solution. As you know, a solid is far more ordered than uh, a solution. Uh, standard entropy change of atomization of iodine. Remember, the standard entropy change is you form one mole of um, iodine atoms. Um, so you need to start off with a half there. The standard state of iodine is a solid. So the key thing to point out is entropy would increase because you're forming a gas which is far more disordered than a solid.